Okay, we have a quorum. Yes, we do. So let's call the November 19th uh, meeting of the Arch Committee to order. Uh, the first item of business is the minutes of the October 22nd meeting. Did everybody have a chance to look at them? Anybody want to make a motion to approve? Um, this is Katie. I'll move approval. Okay. So Michelle, I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the motion passes, the minutes are approved. So the first agenda item is discussion of Parmenta Street downtown aesthetic enhancements. Yeah, so um, the arts committee will recall that this came up last year when the public works department was planning to reconstruct the downtown streets this year, but because of the, um, concern from businesses in having the roads torn up in 2020 following University Avenue being torn up two years in a row. They asked that the project be delayed to 2021. And of course, then when the pandemic came, there was there were some people in the business community that were like, oh, we wish we would have gotten it done this year because you know we didn't have that much foot traffic this year but we didn't know that at the time. So I believe if I remember correctly, when you looked at this project um, and this possibility for public art previously, I, if I'm remembering right, the arts committee was interested in um, looking at something that would be suspended over the street more so than looking at pavement markings um, I did send, I included something in the packet. Um, Megan Mackey sent this idea from, I think it was from Paris. And I sent a link to, in the packet to that article about that. Um, and then Molly also had some feedback and some concern about additional stuff requiring maintenance and people are struggling to pay property taxes. Um, so that's something we'll also want to take into consideration. Um, and then let's see, just an overview of the street project itself. Um, there is going to be a significant amount of water main that's going to be replaced along Parmenter Street going all the way from Terrace Avenue to University Avenue, as well as the road being reconstructed. There will be some added pedestrian improvements that will help shorten the crossing distance for pedestrians um, because we have a lot of ped traffic. So the idea is to create little refuges in the center of the road um, to help pedestrians feel more safe crossing the street and also to slow traffic. Um, and then the green is um, a small portion of Parmenter Street and Elmwood Avenue next to the Stonehorse Green site, and that would be utility repair and roadway replacement. Um, we don't know yet if we're going to have the funding available to do the Stonehorse Green construction in 2021, but that's our goal. Um, the council increased their allocation to the green to 1 million, and we need to raise 600,000. And right now we've probably raised a little less than 50,000. So we have some work to do to be able to get to where we could actually bid and construct the green in 2021. Um, it would be nice if the road project would go along with the green so that we don't have to have construction two more years. Um, so that's something we're keeping in mind. And then the other thing that we're flexible on is we're going to wait and see what happens with the pandemic because if, everything is back to normal in the spring, then that might be a bad time to tear up the streets. So we want to be sensitive to the businesses because they're really struggling, especially the service businesses and the um, restaurants. So we want to have the full design ready to go so that we can bid it and then we'll wait and see what happens with the pandemic and that's you know, gonna be a decision of the Public Works Committee and the council to decide whether to proceed with the road project next year. Um, 
I had included in your packet some streetscaping elements, and this was also in a previous packet of yours. I believe these documents you had looked at previously, but um, the one that I included in the packet only included the pavement options. And I went back and looked at what I had sent to, let's see, where is it? I had sent out previously. And um, the other version that we had looked at last year also included some overstreet lighting ideas, some center um, of the intersection ideas like a medallion or another decorative feature in the center, and then um, some sculptural elements that maybe could, you know, be on either side of the intersection, um, light sculptures, and then. Um, over street features that may or may not be lighting. They may be simply artistic features um, that cast shadows or they could be lit. So I think there are a lot of options. Um, I was impressed that the Public Works Committee sent it to the Arts Committee and also to the TIF team for consideration. I took it to the TIF team and the TIF group is just a staff mostly staff. Um, we do have a couple of consultants that attend and then we also have some elected officials and they really like the idea of uh, over street lighting. That was their preference. So I just wanted to get your feedback and see what you wanted to see here. So are you seeing over street lighting as opposed to um, uh, decorating the pavement, for example? Yeah, they preferred to do something like this rather than doing something in the pavement. The benefit of something like this is I think we don't have to worry about all those manual traffic safety um, statutes that Sean Stowski, our public works director had sent over that I included in your packet. There are a lot of things to consider if it's a traffic control device Whereas if we did like over street lighting, I don't think we'd run into all those same problems, but there would certainly be some coordination with the businesses around because we would probably need to use their building to, to have lighting affixed to the buildings. So we would need to have some cooperation from pro private property owners. And what about maintenance? I know that's a problem with street decoration, but with yep. just lighting, I'm not sure. I am not sure either, honestly. Um, I mean, we put some string lights up at the green and that was just kind of a temporary measure with the CDA and th those are already sagging and somebody's going out to pull them tighter. But I'm guessing that whatever we would do here would be much more planned and engineered and we wouldn't run into those problems. The, the bulbs will eventually burn out. So there would be maintenance, there's always maintenance, but. So is it just safety crossing the street at night that they're concerned about? The public works department um, was concerned about if we're doing something on a crosswalk, that that is a, um, there are specifications in the manual unit uniform traffic safety control device manual that they have to follow there are specs and they say like you your crosswalk should look like this or this but doing something like totally different than that is something that they would just need to evaluate to make sure that it's going to be safe for pedestrians and it's not going to be too distracting to drivers mm -hmm. i read that memo to pretty much be you can't do anything in the crosswalk. Yeah, and it sounded like in the intersection, like in the center, that's actually a little, a little easier than the crosswalk itself. You um, mean like in medallion or something? Yes, yep. I guess my only thought with the lights is that it's really only useful at night, so. I'm not sure it's gonna make it much safer to cross the street in the middle of the day when we have the heaviest traffic downtown. Oh, 
Yeah. And I wasn't, I was proposing the, I, I like the lighting, not as a safety feature, but just more as a decorative ambiance, get your, you know, come down here. There's something going on here. Check out what we have. It was more like that than safety. I wasn't, I think that the intersection is probably lit pretty well already for safety. Okay. Um, let's see here. So yeah, Sean gave us like <laughs> multiple points to consider. Uh, let's see. So yeah, like one of the first is issues to consider is whether pavement markings are permitted on streets if the markings are not intended to convey a message to drivers. I mean, like <laughs> that's the first hurdle to overcome is whether they would even be permitted. Mm -hmm. They get tacky looking when they fade out and, and the, over, the overhead sounds so much easier uh, and more attractive. Yeah, and then we wouldn't be necessarily working as much with, you know, all the guidelines from Public Works, I think, because we wouldn't be getting into the right of way and the pavement. So, um, if I guess we were we were asked to get involved because they were going to be redoing the streets, but if we as a group decide that we can't be doing anything graphic on the streets, then this conversation really is without a deadline at this point, isn't it? If we're going to do something above? Well, that's a good point. And we talked about that at the TIF team meeting. The road project is being funded with TIF 3 funding. And the expenditure period for TIF 3 ends in 2025. I do feel that if we separate out the artistic enhancements from the road project, it's probably less likely to get funded than if we package them together. Mm -hmm. But I agree with your point that there's really no reason that the lighting would have to be done at the same time now if we're not messing with pavement. Unless they're doing anything with the terraces, because if we need to install posts, to have like lighting or any other over the road feature. Uh -huh. And if they're digging up the terraces, then that would be the time to do it. But I don't think do that think that's- that the, would, Do you think that a lighting, the examples of lighting over the sidewalk and the road that you showed us, do you think people would say that's silly, that shouldn't be part of this project because it isn't really part of the road? Like, is it better for us to look at something that other people would consider to be more road-ish, I guess? Yeah, I think it's possible if you can think of something that the committee would support that would be more related to the road project so that it would kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, I understand that and that's probably true. Um, oftentimes streetscaping amenities are part of road projects. So like when Terrace Avenue was redone, we installed that, um, what do we call it? It's like a, a raised platform part of the road in front of Capitol Brewery so that we can more easily like close that segment of the street for a festival. Mm -hmm. And we redid all the lighting, like the lighting is much more nice and decorative. And we installed um, the hanging, the features for the hanging baskets, um, we got new benches and bike racks. So streetscaping usually does go with the road project. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Mm -hmm. So what about McFarland? Like I saw some examples of that. What if we did something that was more like that? Um, maybe a more artistic brick pattern than that, because those are pretty basic. Um, but leave like colorful elements out of it so it doesn't pop out so much and be as so distracting because isn't that one of the concerns yeah and i think the engineers gave us this as an example and i think that it's actually a road company that 
will do this thermoplast treatment. So they seemed pretty comfortable as long as it's not like colorful and a pattern that changes throughout, you know, the course of walking across the, the crosswalk. There was a fish scale looking one that it was in one of the pictures that looked a little bit more decorative, I guess. Okay, let me see. It was in that one that was multiple images together of examples. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Oops. Let's see. Um, there we go. Is it like this one? Yeah, like this one right here. I'm pointing at it, but you guys can't see me. <laughs> Abby, do you know if that's stonework or is it an applique? I think that this is probably, well, it looks like it's surrounded by brick. So I'm not sure. I don't know if that's that thermoplast treatment or if it's something different. I think that these images were compiled by our TIFF planning consultants and they probably just searched for interesting crosswalks. And so I don't know if we have all the details. And what's the timing on this, Abby? Well, um, the Public Works Department is hoping to send this out for bid in January. So it's pretty tight time frame. And it's possible that, you know, if the committee decided we want something that's suspended above the street and it's going to cost approximately this much and we're going to do an RFP separate, we could still make that recommendation as part of the road project, but not do it as part of the bidding work. It would have to be like bid out separately. Would you mind showing the, the lighting page, the one that has all the options with the overhead? Yeah, let me pull that one up. Oops, let's see. There we go. Can a lighting option be something more than just strings of lights? I mean, like kind of in the center right, there's a sculptural looking thing that could be potentially suspended over an intersection, I guess, but it would be expensive. Is that, which one are you talking about here, Rob? To the right, uh, more right there. Oh, this. Well, the one to the left, I was thinking of that that one. The arch, oh, this, that yeah. One. I mean, that could be, it would be expensive, but it could be suspended over an intersection. Mm -hmm. And it could be enhanced with lights. Yeah, there could, I think that there could be something that would be suspended over the intersection or like an arch that would go from like one terrace to the other. I'm not sure what the clearance height would be. And I know Public Works would get involved in that because there are big trucks that go through the downtown. So there's like, you know, they're going to be some requirements for clearance. Strings of lights are just not very artistic. You know, they're just strings of lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Should we know first, like what the guidelines are going to be like, if we can even do something with the pavement before we continue on with these um, discussing it? Like, are it, do you, is someone exploring that? Well, we have the list of requirements from Public Works. So if we have an idea that we think we like for the pavement, um, we can run it through that list of different requirements and see if we think it meets them. It's probably gonna be a little bit of back and forth with Public Works. I mean, we're gonna have to make our case, I think. Um, we could send Public Works a few options if we wanted to. Now, some of the ones you're showing now could be in the terrace adjacent to the intersection. Yep, like these. Yeah. Those are cool. I think Vandewall might have been involved with 
this design. That's probably why they included it. <laughs> They've done a lot of collaborations with actual size artwork on college campuses, and I think this might have been one of them. Abby, do you think that we should try to continue the look that Terrace Avenue has as far as some of the street lighting? There's a separate conversation going on right now about some of the terrace lights needing to be replaced because one of them fell over. The bases um, are getting rusted out. The new ones? The not the new ones on terrace, but oh. some of the other ones in the downtown that weren't replaced. And mm -hmm. now that I'm saying this, I think what I'm convincing myself of is that the terraces are not part of this project. Um, there are, I think, 15 or so that are in danger that are kind of starting to rust and they could topple over. So, so we don't have to consider any of that in our decision. No, yeah, so we're getting close to that, that separately. Yeah. So what kind of recommendations do you think? I mean, we can make two or three or four recommendations to public works, right? I mean, pavement marking or overhead lighting or terrace uh, sculpture or whatever. Well, if we're doing lighting, I kind of favor the ones to the far right, if we're going to do them over the street, like something that's a little bit more decorative looking, artistic looking, um, rather than just the strings, like Rob was saying. I think those are really beautiful. Are they difficult to find? No idea. And do we have to ask these different stores to um, pay the electricity for these or how does this go? Um, well, we would, if we're going from building to building, we would need their support to attach to the building. I figure we would probably cover the electricity, but mm -hmm. I guess it could be a negotiation. Sure. Do you have a guess, a wild guess, Abby, about what a um, a budget could be for an artistic enhancement to this project? Um, no, I wonder what the whole budget for the project is because we could maybe try to follow the 1% idea mm. or maybe that'll be too low, I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me look and see if I can find the whole budget. Oh, shoot. I always forget now. I don't have two computers. I have a laptop that plugs in and is my other computer now. So let me see. Let's see here. I think it would be in the approved capital budget for 2020. Let me see. While you're looking for that, I guess my thought is that this is a really tight timeline and I would hate for us to squander any goodwill we might have by rushing something through that is just because we see, um, we just throw an idea at it because the money might be there. I'd rather us have a really considered idea. Um, and we don't want get people to, people to get frustrated with us. So the whole road project budget is 1.8 million. So 1% 1 of that would be 18,000. So do you think then public works will favor the light idea over the pavement idea? Could we present one of each like a, the option for each? Yes, I think you could present more than one option. And then get feedback. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like $18,000 is much of a budget though, like especially if we're doing a lighting. Yeah. Situation. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna have to go back on my 1% idea because I don't think you're gonna get any of these options for 
one yeah. percent. Yeah. And Abby, are we talking about from terrace to university? Is that how much of a space we're thinking about? Um, well, I think the public works department was thinking we'd want to focus on the intersection of Hubbard and Parmenter Street. Got it. Okay. So but I mean, we could suggest, you know, it depends on what you want to propose and whether that's the right location. I mean, that is kind of like the main intersection, but yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Has anybody seen, um, I, I can't remember where I saw it, but I've seen some really interesting examples of art that is light that's projected onto buildings. Mm. Cool. I'm trying to remember where I saw it though. But that would only work at night, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of these buildings, honestly, like, I mean, this building is probably gonna be tall enough, but I don't know that some of these other buildings are actually going to be tall enough to make sure that whatever is installed isn't going to be mm. sagging to, I don't know. Uh, for a big truck to pass beneath it. Yeah. Right, but if the we other... get poles as part of the street project, that would compensate for that. Mm -hmm. And the art has to be on the crosswalk it, it can't be at the start and end point of the crosswalks like in the corners of each point it could be in the corners because I'm wondering if there could be more more of a sculptural element at each corner that is kind of they're all kind of relating to one another mm -hmm. kind of in a square format they're kind of pointing at each other but they're not necessarily going all the way over the the crosswalk they're just kind of kind of pointing to the direction of you know what I mean yeah I'm so just looking and I I think that it's a possibility Maria I know where there's like a, a regulatory sign so like a stop sign our public works department gets really nervous about having anything that could conflict with that where somebody might not be able to see the stop sign because they're you know, do, it depends on where you put the base, I guess. Maybe if you put it on this side, you mm -hmm. could do that. It, and it could even have light, like the ones that you showed that were sculptural, but had some elements of light on them. Mm -hmm. So that at night, they look good, but during the day, they look good too, because they have the base, which is also very nice and artistic. Decorative. That's a cool idea. Does it have to be in the crosswalk? What about these, um, like those corner pieces where the, the sidewalk is, where the intersections meet, like where the, yeah, like right here, where, where the stormwater artwork is. Um, could we do something in that space rather than the crosswalk on each corner? Yes, we could. Think we that might be more practical and then we could do something more artistic. Exactly. Abby, do you know if the cross rocks are still going to be red when this is all done? Or are they going to be black? I don't know. They won't be black because the they're going to make this asphalt. Right now it's concrete and you can see that it's like breaking up in many parts. This is the only concrete street we have in the city. They're going to make the whole thing asphalt. So I think they would probably paint it either white or red, or they might have the white um, bars going this way. I, I'm not sure if they've decided yet. Some history here in, uh, in the red, where it's red now, um, the city had tried putting in bricks there, and it was constant maintenance. And after some time, they were taken out. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. I do too, now that you say it, Molly. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely would favor exploring the idea of the corners of the sidewalks where the crosswalks meet. 
So one little sculptural element at each corner. And when I say, I shouldn't say little, one sculptural element at each corner. Yeah. Could it be all four corners or could it be two corners? I guess we could do either depending on budget. Yeah. There are people that, that use wheelchairs downtown. Yeah, so we'll definitely need to make sure we're complying with the ADA requirements. Yeah, for sure. And so I think it's, I don't know, I have like a consistency thing where it's like, it's only at this intersection then. So what about the other intersections? Are they gonna get them in the future or is this just a special intersection? Like the intersection just one block north is a pretty busy intersection too, but it wouldn't have it, right? Or are we saying we would do it at both intersections? I think it'd be cool if we could do both. There's really not a huge amount of area for like the base of something here. Cause you need to, you have to keep this sidewalk open and this sidewalk open. And so it's like, you know, it's gonna be pretty narrow here, the corners. It could be just on one corner. We don't, I mean, there's, especially if the budget's an issue, you know, maybe it's just find the most appropriate corner and just place one on each intersection. And if we thought about lights, is this intersection more difficult? I don't see the taller buildings. Yeah, this is going to be a problem here. Um, well, poles, but yeah, and we'd it's actually there. have to be on someone's property with poles, right? On this one, or we'd have to install them um, in the terrace, the brick terrace. Mm -hmm. I think we should try to do something on the sidewalk or the pavement, like something, you know, some kind of flat artistic element um, rather than the lights. I mean, I think the lights seem like, seem problematic between um, the different type, heights of the building, the electricity use, um, the potential sagging. And so I think that they seem like they might be more troublesome in the long run Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if a structural element was installed at the corner and the lights were part of that, you know, like a bloom of uh, yeah. flowers or whatever, then you wouldn't have to worry about stringing it from building to building. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I've got something in my eye. I'm going to stop the video so I can try to get this out of my eye. <laughs> Yeah. Meg, where are you on this? I'm not sure. <laughs> Is that I like I like a lot of the options. I just I agree with Megan Mackey that we kind of need to put more thought into this than just one meeting, you know? Mm -hmm. This is pretty big and you don't want to just like throw something together. Um, I like, if they're looking for recommendations on putting things in the crosswalk, I actually really like just the simple brickwork brickwork um, version that McFarland mm -hmm. did. And I think having something in the crosswalk does make it safer. I mean, even if you drive downtown Madison, the green, like bright green crosswalks, I mean, they stand out. <laughs> You're not going to run into anyone in those. Yeah. I'm not saying that we need to do that, but if we're thinking about safety, then... I guess I have to figure out what our goal is in this. Is it just to get more art into downtown? Is it safety? You know, like what are what are we focusing on? Do you think we should get more feedback and then meet again on this? From get more feedback from the other entities involved? I wonder if we could um, reach out to that, com that company that McFarland used. I can't remember what process Abby said it was called um, and see if they can do different designs. Like maybe they have more artsy designs versus the brickwork. 
maybe they do have a fish scale kind of option or I don't know. Mm -hmm. You could also tell public works, tell them the ideas that we've discussed and see if they have a preference for one over the other. I mean, strings of lights over the intersection or a piece of sculpture on the corner with lights on it or mm -hmm. something in the crosswalk. I mean, each one of these has its pros and cons, you know, maintenance mm -hmm. being uh, one of them, but mm -hmm. I don't know if they have any preferences or not. Yeah. I do think the painting of the sidewalks would be too much maintenance. Like the, I mean, they're really fun, the vibrant ones, but just realistically, I don't think we'd be able to maintain that. Yeah. Even just the little storm sewer paintings are a tr yeah, trouble. Pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And they don't have trucks driving over them. Mm -hmm. And they did get faded. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about this thermoplastic, whatever it is? Is it a, an adhesive? Um, I was hoping that I would pull up an email that Tom sent me about it, but I'm not seeing that. Okay. Thermoplastic treatments. I can Google it too. I think, didn't I send you a link about a company that does that, Abby? <clears throat> um. Did you? You might have. It's I know Tom sent me one, but it didn't come up in a Google. Let's see. It's basically they heat the asphalt and then press a plastic material into the into a groove in the heated asphalt. Mm. Uh, so it doesn't peel when a snowplow goes over it, for example. Mm. And in that regard, it can be lots of different designs. That's cool. What about something like um, uh, bronze images that are in this, the curb at the crosswalk, like Terrazzo, like in the Miami airport? That's a cool idea, I like that. Oh, we could do Cardinals. <laughs> we can do Cardinals. I like that idea too. I need that. to find that. Okay, wait. Artist, yeah. um, the Miami airport has something. It's Terrazzo. And I'm trying to remember the name of the artist. That would be a maintenance nightmare. Um, Michelle Okadona, I think it is. Is it like this? Probably indoors. Yeah. So now, obviously, that's in Terrazzo indoors. But something that was an outdoor version of that. That's cool. That's really cool. It kind of goes back to our scavenger hunt idea of having cardinals all over. Who was that? Was that Phil's idea? It was, yeah. No, no, it was Michael's. Oh, OK. <laughs> Maybe so, we can just get like one or two in there, one on each intersection. So you think that there would be a way to have these like bronze pieces fabricated and then lay them and then pour the asphalt around it? Like how would that work? How would it work? Um, I confess I'd have to research that. Um, but if we're also talking about the curb and the gutter, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about it all. So maybe it could be something that starts on the curb and sort of flows down into the street and only goes a little bit into the street, but it's welcoming you into the crosswalk kind of thing. That's cool. Um, I don't, I think that that would probably be a, <coughs> you would be tearing out the sidewalk though. And I don't think it's part of the project now. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Super cool idea though, to keep in our back pocket somewhere. Mm -hmm. You found that quickly, Abby. <laughs> yeah. So what should we suggest to public works? Several ideas or one idea? I like the uh, lighting ideas that don't, that are not strings that cross over the street. 
the sort the of globey ones, the mm -hmm. orbs? Something, I mean, maybe this is where we get to the point where we put out an RFQ and we ask um, for artists that work with light to propose something for the intersection that doesn't cross over. And then a different RFQ that asks people who work with color to do something for the I think you showed some images from the TIFF consultant, didn't you, Abby? Mm -hmm. Should we also recommend a crosswalk option as well and see which one they favor? Sure. Mm -hmm. My concern with the crosswalk has just seemed like there are so many rules that you can't break. Plus, they become a maintenance issue. Which, that's a good point. Have we, did we determine who would be responsible for maintenance? Do we know? Yeah, so that's a little bit tricky because TIF money can be used to make improvements. It cannot be used to maintain things. But I think the example was in the packet. Um, of the of the TIF uh, consultants' ideas. Yes, they were. Let me see if I can find that here. Um, here we go. Oh, I did have that one open. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, down far. Um, maybe a little. Was there something more down farther? Um, yeah, something one of these like the upper left or oh, yeah. something yeah that mm -hmm. like that one where your cursor is something like that on a corner. You wouldn't have to be every corner, it could be one corner. Abby, are there things like this that are going into the stone horse green? Um there is artwork in the green. Not lit though. Do you don't have it to is, pull it up? It's lit. Um there's is that, one is that a good left. thing, like consistency-wise? I would defer to your guys' judgment on that. Here's what the piece in the green looks like. And would you want to put that on a corner of an intersection for continuity, or would you want something completely different? Maybe just something with similar elements. Do you remember what the cost of that stone horse green um, sculpture was? I don't know just this one on its own. This is lit um, with the pedestals beneath, but I know together the horses, the heated horses and the barn light sculpture are about a hundred thousand. And if we just had one, so that looks like it's got three elements into the ground. If we just had one of those elements on a corner. I feel like that was around 50,000 for that lighting and the horses were around 50. But Is maybe, that right, Michelle? Maybe I'm mistaken. I probably have the bidding documents and I can tell you exactly if you guys wanna know, let me see. I'm curious, are public restrooms still going into that, uh, that space? Yes, they, the space has either three or four restrooms designed into it. Now, if we did something like that on the corner, do you think it would be distracting for drivers? I think public works would be concerned about it. Mm -hmm. I think we need to decide what our goal is. Is our goal safety or is it to get more art in downtown Middleton? Well, we're the arts committee and they're public works. So uh, you have to come to some sort of an agreement. Or a street fight. Exactly. <laughs> I would still vote for safety because I wouldn't want to see anyone get hurt <laughs> because we did something. Stalking at the light. Yeah. Those crazy <laughs> artists. I also still have that issue that we had with the roundabout sculpture that I would like to install a piece of art somewhere where people can like really sit there and enjoy it, you know, like not zooming by. 
especially if it's going to be really expensive. You want to be able to have like benches and just mm -hmm. really enjoy the artwork. Mm -hmm. The total cost for public art is a hundred, but I don't remember if there's a specific breakdown. Sure. And that's within Stonehorse Green? Yes. So keeping it simple and pretty and safe. Right. <laughs> Is it too much to ask? Well, I, mean, I, vandalized. I think that sculpture, those sculptures with lights kind of look like lampposts. I don't think those are distracting. Yeah, I think those could work. I agree. I feel like the actually the lights, like if you see the globes on, on the right, that would mm -hmm. feel more distracting. I could totally see somebody looking up and just looking at them and mm -hmm. get distracted by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you kind of like the cattail idea? Or I don't know. What yeah, I think those are beautiful. Although all those three sculptures on the left, I think they're very beautiful. And if it has light element to it, it makes it even better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We if we do a up? single sculpture, though, are we kind of drifting away from the from the whole crosswalk thing? Like, we'll see how those ones uh, to the right. There's four. There's three of them. That's what mm -hmm. I was thinking. That you could do something similar to that in each corner. They've got some same room. Well, and those are kind of similar to the ones in Stone Horse Green. We maybe could have a design element that's similar with a similar material um, for continuity. Mm -hmm. But a very simple version. Yeah. What about something that is a sculpture during the day, lights up at night, but is no higher than waist high at each of those corners? I just feel like these are going to be confused with Mm. lights and stops. I mean, I just feel like it's going to clutter the place where people are looking for driving instructions. But if it's waist high, won't that be distracting to a driver at night? Um, well, maybe it could be visible to people on the sidewalk. But I mean, if it's tall, like these images show, I, you know, I can't imagine drivers would be distracted by that if it was on a corner. No, I just feel like it's it's cluttering the places where they're looking for directions. They look up for stop signs. They look up for street light, um, you know, st stop lights. Street so names. All of the stop signs. Well, and I wonder what public works would have in regard to input and lights being distracting to the drivers. Like if they have some that they think would be better or oh, they would, would not work at all. Yeah, it would, they would have a lot to say about that. I feel like we're missing a few pieces of the puzzle. Well, I mean, they want, they just want input from the arts committee. The safety aspect of it is up to them. You know, from mm -hmm. what, what, what do we like from an aesthetic standpoint? I guess another idea to think about um, is if you wanted to do something that was over the street whether it were lit or not, um, like maybe something like one of these, then you could try to focus it more on this street because this is a one way. So it's going to be a lot safer. I mean, it's a lot more obvious where cars are driving. And this area is also this, the part of the street that we'd be closing if we're having a larger event at the Stone Horse Green because then we can double the size of the plaza. So having something over here would be kind of cool. Does it get truck traffic, Abby? Does I... the overhead be a problem? There are delivery trucks that go down that street. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know the long table deliveries park on the south side of Elmwood Avenue, like just north on the just north of the green. Um, I don't. I'm not sure if trucks use this this street or not. I honestly, I don't know. They probably do because there are so many businesses that are going to get deliveries, but. 
So maybe we should just forward what we've discussed to Public Works and let them give us some feedback. I agree with that. They um, they already put their agenda out for their next meeting, which is on Monday. Oh. And so they wouldn't be meeting again until, let's see, they meet, they always meet before plan commission. So, oh, actually, no, I think that they wouldn't meet again until December 14th. Is there time to amend their agenda for a Monday meeting? Yeah, you I, have 20 up till 24 hours, don't you? Yeah, I don't think we can because they're the reason that they put their agenda out today is because the two main staff members who handle it are off. Okay. So maybe we'll just forward just forward our discussion items to them and let them decide what they think is best. And then are there, Michelle, I know you indicated that there were some pieces of the puzzle that were missing. And one of the questions specifically that I heard was the company that does the thermoplast, what they, what other design options that they have. So I can get that back to you. Mm -hmm. Were there other questions? Budget. That, yeah, they're not going to give us a budget. They're probably looking for us to propose a budget. If we ask Public Works for a budget, it'll be like $50. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, and I guess maybe we need to know if they're, if we should be focusing more on public safety or art. Like, I think that's something that we are kind of needing to know. Personally, I think that's their responsibility and not ours. Well, I think we have to, you know, we have to meet them in the middle, though. Sure, that's why I think if we give them several ideas. Um, well, I definitely favor sending the ideas over that we have um, and then seeing which ones they are more receptive to. Exactly. Okay. So are, are, you, are you making that motion, Michelle? Sure, I'll make that motion, Rob. Okay. Somebody want a second? Katie, you're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm watching Meg's face. <laughs> Uh -huh. Why am I making a funny face? No, I think that we all wish we had a little bit more direction from Public Works of what they're asking from us. If it's just to make an intersection a little bit prettier than the thermo paint, the thermoplastic paint and the crosswalks might be plenty. Mm -hmm. Um, if they really want our artistic things, then yeah, so it, it's like, I guess I'm seconding the motion because yes, one of everything, <laughs> tell us what you want. Exactly. That, they want our input. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this is our input. Yeah. They, they can pick from what we talked about. So are you seconding, Katie? I did, yeah. Any further discussion? I'm curious uh, what other uh, projects have been done um, since the committee was formed. Oh, good question. Um, let me show you them. So, um, So um, I wish I could make this bigger. I'm not sure how to, but um, the committee did the, um, worked with an artist who did the stained glass at the police and court building. There are four different panels that depict the conservancy. The committee did these, this project with working with a high school English teacher and graphic design teacher to have students fabricate haikus and um, pictures to go along with them. There are six of these on University Avenue. They're called, um, this project's called Warning Signs. 
Um, we accepted the donation of the self-made man sculpture from Bob Bletner and helped figure out the location and how to safely install it in the median. This is the one that has bullet holes in it right now and needs conservation work. Had it come from someplace else before? Yes, um, this sculpture, he had had it installed on his property that he owned on the east side of Madison before he moved it to this location. But the bullet holes happened here <laughs> when it after well after it got installed, it just happened like in the last six months or so. Um, and then we worked with Middleton Station Apartments and this was the design for the quadrant sculpture. And this is a picture of it installed on Terrace Avenue. And the developer who um, was involved with building the apartments is Chris Laurent and he was on our committee for a while. And the artist is Randy Olson, that's him. Um, we worked on a project, a temporary art installation called Community Canvases at the Middleton Public Library stairwell where com community members that. painted. And then Phil Nelson, who was on our arts committee, did the layout and ins installation. Um, and then we have the Dama mural now. And this is a rendering, but it's actually installed now at the salt storage shed on North Parmenter. And then we have the Love Your Neighbor mural, which I haven't updated the website yet, that's installed now. Um, we worked with Starbucks on Allen Boulevard. They had a mistake in their building construction and they were gonna have to just have windows that were, uh, well, actually, initially, they were. this was just gonna be a solid brick wall on both sides, but we require windows on all sides of buildings, especially when they're along major roads. And so they installed the windows, but they were gonna cover them up with just white, plastic and we worked with, we had a design competition and selected a piece of art that is a map of Middleton that Emily James was the artist. And then we've also been involved in the storm drain murals. Um, we did this Molly, you probably saw this when it was operational um, at the senior center right across from Hubbard Avenue diner. We had some video, video um, footage of different art and photography that was showing for a while. So that's, those are pretty much the projects that the Arts Committee has been involved with. There, some years ago, there was a, near the Capitol Brewery, there was a, a piece of art. What happened to that? I, oh. I heard it got rusted and other things. Yep, that was it. That was, um, that was the Quadrants sculpture. So um, that's, let me show you here. Is that a thing of the past? It's there. No, um, it's back installed. It It's this piece here. And yeah, it, there was another one that was shorter. Oh, this one. Can you see that here? This little ball with the post? No, no. It was different than that. It, well, it was probably before the committee was formed. Oh, I don't know about that one. This one did get rusty though, and it had to be taken down temporarily. And it had to go out to the Municipal Operations Center. And we had arts committee members that did a citric acid treatment and cleaned it up. And then our public works crew reinstalled it. Any other discussion before we uh, take a vote on the motion and the second about what to uh, forward to public works? Can we just clarify what's, what is being sent to public works? What do you have as your notes, Abby? Um, well, I can't take notes during the meeting anymore because I'm, I only have one computer and I have to share my screen to show the Zoom. Okay. So I take the notes from the video after the meeting. But um, I, what I plan to, to do would be to send, um, to send them uh, the different options that you all talked about that you'd be okay with, which would be the thermoplast treatment if 
there were sort of a more interesting or artistic design. And I know Michelle, you mentioned this one specifically. And then, um, let's see, oh, I gotta go back to my other one, sorry. And then I would send them um, some images of these sculptural lit elements that could be at the corners. Um, and then what, uh, what other ones did you all talk about that you liked? Lights over the intersection. Lights over the intersection. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just plan to like listen to the different options that each committee member expressed interest in and then put that into a memo with images and send it to public works. Are we ready to take a vote? Yeah. All in favor of, uh, of uh, the recommendation to forward to public works say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Should we go on to the next agenda item? Okay. Oops, sorry, my Zoom bar keeps moving down and getting in the way. Okay. So the okay. next item, percent for arts. And Christina was not able to be here tonight, but she typed up some notes that she wanted me to share with you all. Um, so at our last percent for arts meeting, Christina shared the one pager that she put together, which I included in your packet. It still needs to be updated um, pending additional information. But one of the takeaways from that meeting that we had was that um, we would need to have a meeting with a real estate developer and get their feedback. And so we met with Jacob Klein, who develops workforce housing in Middleton and who has included artwork on at least one of his projects in the city already, on his own accord. And um, he seemed open to the idea. He wasn't overly enthusiastic about it, um, but he wasn't in opposition either. And we asked them like how, you know, if we had this percent for arts program and we required a real estate developer to pay half a percent, how would you come up with that money? Would you be able to borrow for it? And he said that he would likely fund it from the company books and write it off as an expense, uh, a project expense, or even a tax deductible donation. And we, we asked him, would most real estate developers have the capacity to do that? Um, like we were thinking of Anthony Gray, who was proposing the project on University Avenue and he's like a first time developer. And he thought that they would. And when we mentioned the amount, he didn't seem to think that it was like unrealistic or anything to expect that amount of funding. So half a percent of the TIF allocation um, but then he came up with another suggestion, which would be to create the program as a required fee when applying for building permits or to funds and to model it after park fees. Um, what I wasn't sure of is whether it needed to have a specific call out in state statute to be permitted. Park fees um, are specifically mentioned as a permitted fee that the city can charge for a development project. And um, we charge park fees to all residential developments because they all have demand for um, services, for park services. And they're not uh, inexpensive. It's, it's probably about $6,000 per new unit of housing that's built. Um, so I wanted to chat with our city attorney about that and find out whether he had ever heard of any other cities doing it and whether he thought we could charge a fee like that. And um, unfortunately, I put it on the our legal review agenda for, I think it was the day after we met with Jacob, but we had 12 things on the agenda and we didn't get to it. So I haven't talked with our attorney yet um, to see if it's even an option. I'm a little uncomfortable about requiring it for all projects where I think like we have leverage if they're asking for TIF then they need to do something for us whereas if they're just doing their own project and they're not asking for anything special I think it would be a hard 
sell to add yet another fee on to all those projects that are a lot of times hard to make them make financial sense in Middleton anyway, because the costs of land are so high. Um, but I'll ask our attorney and get back to you guys about that. Um, and we're not ready at this point to propose anything specific. We want to continue to research. Okay. Anything else with respect to that agenda item? Should we go on to item three, uh, the Middleton Center window treatments? Yes. At the last meeting, um, you declined to accept the proposal that the developer had suggested, which was like the, the shoppers in the window. And I think that the outcome of the meeting was that you all were gonna send me ideas for artists that they could work with, but I don't think anybody sent me any ideas for artists. And then the other thing you did was you threw Meg McCombs under the bus because she wasn't at the meeting. And so <laughs> not really, but you said, well, maybe Meg could work with um, T-Wall and come up with something. And um, I have heard from Jake from T-Wall one time since then. And he was just asking like if we had any ideas at this point in time for him. So, so Meg, do you have any ideas? <laughs> Oh, you're muted, Meg. I can find some ideas. You want me to research ideas for window art? I mean, is this something that we can do like a call for artists on like we did with Starbucks? It's kind of the same idea. Oh, I like that idea. How long do we have? Is this like a... Um, they're probably hoping to open and I would guess spring just eyeballing like how far along they are I think we have time to do that that would be kind of fun but we would definitely want to have like a financial um payment to whoever was selected mm -hmm. like last time yeah I, I would think I, I don't know if the developer will be open to that idea like um I mean maybe yes maybe no so one idea would be you could send them like three options. One would be the call for artists and the contest. And maybe we could sell it to them that they would get some positive publicity and that kind of thing. Cause like we went, we included Starbucks and in all of our marketing when we did that. Um, and then maybe another idea would be like, here are some three specific artists that you could reach out to. And here's some examples of other work that they've done. And then maybe the third option could be here's some examples of what ideas that we would like to see and you can find your own artists, but this is, these would meet our criteria. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just an idea to give them a few options. Do you have the, um, list, the artist directory that you can share with me? Yes. Okay, because I could go through it in all my spare time <laughs> and see if there's any one that I think would be a good fit. Because I think it's gonna, you know, it's gonna have to be kind of somebody who is able to digitize their work. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get it on like a window cling or whatever material they use. Um, but I can do that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I can get that to you. Um, the other thing would be, I don't know if you would also want to include the list of artists who applied for the Starbucks project. A lot of them were students at the time. That's a good idea. So I can send, I'll, I'll send those over to you. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, anything else with regard to uh, the window treatments? Are we good with that? Thank you, Meg. Yes, thanks, Meg. Thank you, Meg. Thanks, Meg. I'll knock on your door from time to time to see how you're doing. <laughs> and I was really only joking when I said, Meg, do you have any ideas? <laughs> okay, let's go on to um, item four update of maintenance of current projects, including self-made man. Yes, yeah, so we got a proposal for 
conservation of self-made man. And um, this is not a permanent solution according to this conservator that I've been talking with, Cricket Harbeck. She thinks that a permanent solution would actually be to take the sculpture to a facility where you could actually pour bronze and like smooth it over. So you would actually like be permanently repairing the piece. I'm, I butchered that so bad, Megan Mackey, I'm so sorry. There's There's gotta be a better way to explain that. And I'm sure you can do it. What happens, so. Okay. <laughs> it's very descriptive. <laughs> okay. So, um, so she, she, um, her alternative was the idea that Meg had given us, um, and that's what I asked her to quote because when she started talking about the permanent option, I was hearing our insurance adjuster speaking to me, and I'm like, "There's no way that they're going to cover this. It's going to be way too expensive." So. Um, she's got a proposal, which I included in your packet, and I've given this over, the total cost is $15,569, and I've given this over to our insurance um, agent, and they are asking that particular aspects be separated out, specifically, um, we had had the waxing somewhere in here. I don't see it immediately, but the, the annual or biannual waxing, we asked for that to be included from her because I was gonna reach out to the original developer who gave us this piece and ask him to pay for that. Cause he, he didn't know like who had done the work previously and he, he's willing to do it, but he's like, I don't know who can do it. So I was like, well, we'll just have her put it into her proposal and then separate out the costs. But the insurance agent doesn't want that included at all. And then the other piece is he didn't want um, the temporary stuff. So um, everything that was happening in the fall is not part of the so-called permanent solution, which is actually not also not a permanent solution. It's just to prevent um, water and snow from coming in. And he didn't agree with them paying for this portion. And then he also thought that her scaffolding rental costs were too high. So I've reached out to her and asked her to see if she can get a better cost on scaffolding. And then if she can separate out those temporary things and the general maintenance things into a separate proposal. And then I'm planning, depending on the cost, I'm hoping to reach out to Bob Blettner who donated the sculpture to us and ask us if he'd ask if he'd be willing to cover the cost for the, the waxing, which he is his responsibility anyway. And then maybe he'd also be willing to fill the holes in the fall because that's gonna prevent the sculpture that he donated to the city from more damage. I don't know what to do about the scaffolding. Um, our forester didn't want to allow the um, conservator to use their city bucket truck because they have a whole bunch of requirements that have to be met and he thought it would be easier to just have her get scaffolding. So does this include the permanent solution as well in this quote or is this just the temporary solution? This is, um, this is the medium term solution. And she says it may last a minimum of five to 10 years. So do you need any um, uh, input from us or you're just basically bringing us up to date on where things stand? I think it's just an update at this time unless you all have any concerns with the direction. Sounds good to me. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Uh, my only comment is that, um, well, I guess it's a question. Are you asking Bob Lettner to cover the cost of cricket or of, the, of a conservator doing the wax after the treatment or are you gonna ask Bob Lettner to do that? I'm gonna ask him to pay for it because 
when I reached, so he doesn't live in Middleton anymore. Um, he has a gentleman named Tim Carey doing most of his like day-to-day -day business for him. Tim has an office like right, right above the Mustard Museum building and we work with him on projects all the time. He's awesome to work with. And so I worked with him and he was like, I just simply don't know who could do this work and we're happy to do it and we're happy to pay for it, but we can't find anything in our records now that we've had a retirement for who was doing this work previously. And so that's why I asked her to just include it. And then I figured we would just reach out to him and ask him to cover the costs for the, the waxing, which is their responsibility. But then I thought also maybe they would pay for this temporary portion that our insurance won't cover in the fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I not, think it's a better a better choice because once you start adding pigment to the wax, it's it requires a lot more skill to put on. Okay. Without making without making it look weird. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not sure what to do about the scaffolding. I'm hoping she could find a better price because like the way that he put it is I can get scaffolding for like 50 bucks a day, and this is like way out of line for what the cost should be. But I think that it is a special kind of scaffolding because it has to be adjustable on the legs because it's setting, she's setting it on top of boulders. So I'm not sure, she's gonna look around and see what else she can find, but I don't know if she's gonna find scaffolding that's gonna be a whole lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Anything else to talk about with respect to uh, maintenance of current projects? No, so let's go up to item five update on, on update on plaque installation. And I don't have an update. Um, has anybody gone? I know the Starbucks is closed right now. Did anybody go into the PD since the last visit to see if they had put their plaque? I know Rob, you talked to them last time to see if they would go ahead and put the plaque up, but had they? Have you seen anything, or did you not? You probably I've didn't. Since, I haven't been there since my previous visit. I can go back and check. Yeah, and I can go back and check too. Um, I just, I know Starbucks is closed, so I'm guessing that they haven't done anything. Right. I tried so, to Starbucks. go into the police department to take a picture of the plaque for the paper, but they had the doors locked, so. Well, uh, I went no. to the, uh, I went to the uh, window there and they said there was a guy who, they said they had the plaque and there was a guy who was supposed to install it, but he hadn't installed it yet. As I said, I would like to go inside the courtroom and take a picture, but uh, it had not yet been installed. I don't know when that was, three weeks ago, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And the guy at Starbucks said he had the plaque as well, but he hadn't installed it either. But he said he would. Okay. Yeah, they're closed, I think, for two weeks. So we can check back before the next meeting. Anything else to discuss? Someone want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn, Megan. I second. So Megan uh, moves and Molly seconds. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.